All right, good day, folks. Hope you guys are well. Hope you guys are good. Um, my name is Lonabo Fololo. I am the CEO and founder of the Wealth Academy. And today, I just want to shoot this video and talk about the five tips for the first time home buyer. Now, I bought my first property in 2009 and I uh, have been buying and selling properties ever since then. In fact, um, I have owned a real estate company called Rosen Properties, a franchise in Port Elizabeth. And through that company, I've helped literally hundreds of people to buy and sell homes, um, you know, over a space of six years. Now, you know, um, I thought, let me just write this, uh, you know, quick, uh, you know, um, five tips on how on, uh, you know, the things to prepare, you know, when you were for when you are a first time home buyer. So now the first thing on the list that I want to talk about as a first time home buyer, in fact, maybe even before we get there. You know that in South Africa, the value of, you know, um, real estate is valued at uh, the last estimates are sitting at 5.8 trillion rands. And that does not cover a lot of real estate that is in the hands of the government, you know, um, you know, or real estate that has not exchanged hands for, you know, for many years, you know, so that is based off the, um, you know, the, the data coming from the deeds registry, right? That's 5.8 trillion. And those are studies done into basically in 2017. We don't have any recent studies right now. But globally, real estate is sitting at over $260 trillion. So it is a massive asset class. And it is, you know, something that is considered to be the, the cornerstone for wealth creation. It is considered something that is, uh, you know, um, something that brings dignity. Now, for us in South Africa, especially those who are dispossessed or not able to buy properties because of the previous, you know, apartheid laws. Um, so property is something that is really, really dear to us because it's a matter of dignity. You find that every young uh, a black woman or, 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 or guy, you know, when they start working, the first thing they want to do is to buy a home, right, to own a property. And I know this because it was, you know, barely one year after I was working that I sought to buy a home. So let's talk about these five tips. You know, as I've observed throughout my years, working with people, buying and selling properties, you know, there's quite a lot of, um, you know, uh, there's quite a lot of miseducation or no education at all when it comes to property uh, buying, especially, you know, for your residents. So the five tips. Um, that every you know first time home buyer should look at number one you want to prepare yourself so what do you mean when you say prepare yourself by preparing yourself you know look at where you are right now what city you are in you know what suburb do you live in uh, you know and look at your career you know um do you see yourself working in that same job that you're working in do you see yourself working in the you know in the same city and town that you're living in right now um maybe in the next five years or so you know those are the things that you need to look at um you know um are you single are you married you know do you have kids do you plan on, on getting married do you plan on having kids you know all of those things will have an effect on the property that you're buying right now so you want to have a look at those things and look at where do you project your life to be in the next three to five years right um because that is quite important um you know consideration for you to make as you are going to buy your property because one of the things about property is that it is an illiquid investment uh, meaning it's not easy to get in and out of um, as you would have maybe money in the money market or something like that. It is an illiquid investment and as such, it has some cost connotations, um, you know, attached to it. So number one, you want to prepare yourself by doing all this homework uh, for yourself, right? Understanding where you are going to be in the next five years and what exactly that you need. And then the second thing you want to do, you want to save for a deposit. Now, most banks, if you're a first time, uh, you know, home buyer, most bank will give you 100% LTV. What is LTV? LTV is loan to value. So in other words, whatever amount you qualify for, um, you know, when you're purchasing a property, most banks are more than willing to give you 100% bond. So meaning, it, you know, you might find that there is no requirement for you to save for a deposit. However, I do want to advise you to actually 
uh, you know, save for a deposit because a deposit, you know, even if it, it's not required, it is a good practice for you to actually put a deposit down because this sort of, you know, forces you to have equity in the deal so that, you know, in the next five years or so, um, when you now you want to start building your, maybe your, um, your rental portfolio, you are able to call up the equity from your whole loan and, um, you know, and then use it as a deposit to buy other properties. So you might want to look at that and that is saving for a deposit because it, it actually forces you to have equity in the property. Because remember, the first five years you are paying your bond, you are basically doing almost nothing to your principal. All you are doing is just simply servicing in, you know, um, you're simply servicing interest. So you want to make it a point that you are able to save a little bit of money and put it down as a down payment, even though it's not a requirement. So if, if you have done so, you have saved money, apply for a 100% bond, but when you pay your money into your bond account, tell your banker that you actually, you want to allocate that to the capital, right? You don't want to service your interest because that's what the bank, if you don't tell them what to do with the money, that you know, your money will just simply be servicing interest, right? So you want to tell them that this is for your capital contribution towards your home loan, right? So save for a deposit. Now, as you say for a deposit, know that most properties you buy, um, you'll find that the, the, the bond registration fees and the transfer fees are not included in the purchase price. Depending on what type of property you're buying, if it's a, a townhouse from a developer, most developers do include, but not all of them, do include this, you know, in the transaction. Most of them actually don't. So either way, if they don't, if, if it's included, you know, please use the money as a deposit, right? So, um, you know, as to, you know, allow yourself to have, you know, forced, you know, um, equity in the deal. So that's, 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 that's what you want. And the other thing you want to look at is depending on the, the value of the property you're buying, you might have to look at things like transfer duty. Um, you might have to put some money aside for the transfer duty. So these are the questions you need to understand so that when you are beginning the process, you're able to ask the right questions from your real estate agent because real estate agent work for one thing and that is to earn a commission right so you want to make sure that you're asking all the right questions now the third thing that you want to look at you want to constantly check your credit record now this is available from the major um, um credit bureaus being transunion and um uh, and Experian. you can get a free credit report every single year so that you can see where you are that credit report details all the credit commitment you have and that you've had in the past. If you've had any judgment, it will appear there. If you've had um, a judgment rescinded, it will also appear there. Um, you know, if you've um, been not been able to pay any account for any length of time, it will also appear there. Uh, most accounts will actually appear over 200, um, 280 days period where it will say this account was actually outstanding for this length of time. So you want to look at that before you actually do your home loans um to apply for your home loan i don't know about you but um you know for me i hate rejection so i always make sure that i do my background research before i embark on a deal like that right so you want to check your credit record make sure that everything is uh hunky dory you want to get to as close as possible to 800 points as um that will ensure that you're getting you know a great interest rate from the bank and it's easy for you to actually get your home loan right so that is point number three do always check your credit report now number four you want to check how much you qualify for right this is quite easy most banks right now will have an app where you can actually check how much you qualify for even websites like your property 24 or private property they will have an app where you can punch in your numbers and it can tell you how much you can qualify for now what normally happens is that as per the credit um the national credit act you can qualify for 30% 30, 30 of your gross income can be used for repayments on a mortgage or a bond, right? So you want to make sure that you do your credit. I mean, I mean you, you do your pre-qualification, check how much you qualify for. Now, if, if you punch your numbers, right, and you are told that you qualify for 3 million, okay? And you know that you can get a nice house 
or townhouse maybe only looking for is a three bed townhouse you know uh, you know sort of like a lock and lock and go situation that you can get for 1.2 million 1.5 million there is no need for you to go and buy a property for the maximum you qualify for right for so many different reasons which i'm going to explain right now one of the reasons why you don't want to get the, the maximum you qualify for is simply because you are going to have to pay for that particular bond, right? So if you take a bond for one for, for three million versus one point five million, right? So whatever you're going to be paying there on a monthly basis is obviously going to be higher on a three million bond than it would be on a one point five million bond. So make sure that you don't put yourself in the corner um, because you're gonna to have to be repaying this bond. And number two, you also want to check. Um, you know, you always want to buy less than what you qualify for so that you leave room when you decide that you want to build a property portfolio, you still have some qualification or some amount you qualify for in terms of your credit affordability that you can go and buy a nice uh, property, rent it out, have your tenants pay for that particular bond and for all the costs that are associated with that particular bond. That's how wealth is built. So men, the mistake that we all make, or most of us make as first time home buyers, I know this because I did the very same you know, mistake. We want to go for the highest that we, we qualify for, right? You want to go you know, for something that's affordable, something that's nice, you know, something that, that is good for you. You, know, you don't have to go for the maximum because then you actually you know, are killing the amount you can qualify for in terms of you buying your next property that you can use as a rental property. So make sure that you don't buy for the maximum. Now, that is tip number four. Tip number five, you want to use a bond originator. Now, what is a bond originator? Now, most estate agents work with these people called bond originators. Now, bond originators work with you, for you, on behalf of the bank. What does that mean? You sign the offer to purchase um, you know, we'll do a video, a whole video on, on, you know, what to look for in an offer to purchase um, or an agreement of sale. So you sign the offer to purchase with the agent. This, it, the, it, it, it's, it's an offer. It's an offer when you're signing it as a buyer. Once the seller accept, it becomes a binding agreement, right, to buy the property. So now the, the agent normally takes the offer to purchase and they will give it to bond originators, right so estate agents love to deal with bond originators and it's very it's the very same reason which is you would actually love to deal with the bond originator and that is bond originators have got working relationships with all the major banks right so when they submit your application they will submit your application to standard bank fnb um and uh and and apsa and net bank right maybe they will you know, if all the banks decline, maybe they will look at SA Home Loans, right? But most importantly, they will actually apply on those four banks, which is Standard Bank, APSA, um, Net Bank, and FNB. Now, the beauty with this is that the banks are now competing for your credit agreement. So in other words, one bank can give you prime, you know, just prime. One bank can give you prime plus two, prime plus one, prime plus whatever. You can then compare based on the terms that the bank, each bank is giving you and decide which one is good for you. Now, because you're banking with, with bank A or bank B, it does not mean that that particular bank is the one that's going to give you the most favorable interest rate. That all depends on a whole lot of things, right? It might depend on the fact that the particular bank is overexposed in that particular area. Therefore, they will give you a higher interest rate or decline the credit application altogether. It can be an area. It can be an estate that you're buying in. It can be so many different reasons that will cause your bank to actually give you a higher interest rate or decline your property, right? Or even approve your property. So, you know, don't be loyal to one bank. Be loyal to the bank that's going to give you the best deal, right? Be loyal to the numbers. Be loyal to the deal, right? So you then make your choice on which bank you want to choose, right? So this is the beauty of using a bond originator. And I've had clients in the past when I was an estate agent who insisted on going to their own bank, of which obviously they have the right to do so. And when their own bank declines, then, you know, they don't know what to do, right? They can't speak directly to, you know, with the credit managers, right? So as a result, they've got nowhere to go. If the bank declines, then it's game over. But with the bond originator, I've seen many deals that the bank would decline, 
but then the bond originator will go and actually motivate the application and we've had declines you know being converted into into approvals you know i've seen lots and lots of those but you don't have that with your own bank right unless maybe you're a private banker then that's a completely different case but even then you want to still use a bond originator to apply at all the other banks right whilst your um, your private banker is handling your application in your specific bank okay so guys i hope that was um you know informative as um as elisa masupa says this is informative thank you very much i hope you found value so the five tips guys just to summarize you know as a first-time home buyer one you want to prepare yourself number two you want to save as much as possible for your uh deposit transfer costs even transfer duty depending on what type of property you're buying from you're buying um you want to do your credit report credit check which is free once a year and all the major credit uh, platforms transunion and um and uh and experience and also you want to buy don't buy the maximum you qualify for in terms of your credit worthiness right don't buy for the maximum buy what you can afford what you need right so that you leave room for you to buy properties that you can rent out in the future right so and um and um and when you buy please make sure that you use a bond originator who will then work on your behalf and apply at all the banks the last thing I forgot to mention with the bond originators, they get commission from the bank, not from you. Their service to you is free of charge. Okay? As a, in the property chain, in the property transaction, as a buyer, you are sitting in a very good place, right? As compared to the seller who must pay the estate agents, of, uh, estate agents fees and, um, uh, 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 um, you know, the bank must pay the bond originator the origination fee. So, with that being said, ladies and gents, thank you very much. Do note that on the 19th of February, from 10 o'clock all the way up until 4 o'clock, we have a full day seminar where there is five property professionals who are going to be teaching about, you know, investing into property, the different ways of investing into property, whether student accommodation, whether it is, you know, buying townhouses, whatever it is, and where do you start as a novice property investor. So all of that is going to be discussed in that particular webinar. It is going to be online, meaning you can join from wherever you are. You can join from your car. You can, it doesn't matter where you are, you can join us via Zoom. The cover fee for that particular um, event is only 500 rand. I had to talk to some of the guys to reduce the money. Otherwise, you would have had to pay, you know, maybe, you know, 3,000 rand for such information that you're going to be getting in that particular event. So for more information on that, check us, um, check uh, um, um, on this particular page. I will also leave the link in the comment section um, of this particular video so that you can, um, you can be able to reserve for yourself a seat. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let us all reach for the top for the bottom is overcrowded. Remember, wealth creation through real estate is a possibility. You just have to know how. That is where the Wealth Academy comes in. Thank you very much. Cheers. Love you all. Stay blessed.